Hello one, hello all. Welcome to episode 25 of Willie Interviews. I, I, I've been covering as much as I possibly can and today we're going sports. And uh, we, we got quite quite a, a, a big get as far as I'm concerned. Uh, tree of urinating tree uh, sports comedy fame. Uh, how are you today, sir? I'm doing all right, man. Just trying to relax on a Monday night, you know. Can't believe it's already the end of September, but yeah, these past few months have been it. going like really like quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. I, I can't believe everything is about to start oh, all yeah. over again as far oh, as easily. sports and everything. It's Absolutely. insane. Um, so to get started, uh, I, I guess I'll explain both of us in case your audience is here or my audience is, doesn't, is in, unfamiliar with you. I, I normally cover movies. Uh, and I have an interview series where I interview as many content creators as possible, ranging all over the place. So uh, that explains uh, the sports content tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And as for my viewers, uh, Tree here does quite, quite fantastic comedic work when it comes to shitting on sports teams and, and just capturing the essence of of bad teams and and just just it, it, it I, I don't want to call it trolling i don't want to call it bullying but these teams I, deserve I, it it's it, i call it shit posting that's yeah, all shit it posting right exactly. it makes me pretend i have no expectations for this yeah. sort of stuff but but uh, as as an editor there's there's absolutely some top-notch work going into it and if if you're at all a fan of anything uh, check out urinating tree and I'm sure he's he's made fun of your team at some point in time so there's that um, tree you've been on YouTube for about ten, well a little bit over 10 years now yeah. um, you've had some changes over your you know regarding your format over the time uh, what brought you to this current style uh, wow. I, I, go ahead Oh, sorry. In terms of the current style, I know I um, I actually started out like in a totally different like medium. I had started out as like in video games. Like this was like a while ago, like 2006, 2007. Very like um, I don't think it worked out very well. I don't think it aged well. But for the most part, like I'd started like again in 2010. But I mostly did like just basic stuff. Nothing I would say was going to get me like super thing. It was more inside jokes with the group of people I was hanging out with at the time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is how like, you know, it seems really off the wall. That was why. <laughs> but for the most part, I had stopped doing YouTube for something like four or five years. Really? At the point because um, I mean, I was at the point where it was just like, whatever. It's like I had grown out of it and I was at the point where it's like, okay, like I'll only come back to it if I have like this killer concept or like a good concept and I have like the, the fire to do videos again. But um, how it really came to be is like a perfect storm of a bunch of different things that came to play. First, um, I don't know how political you get 2016 election. Um, I did. Um, I figured it's like, you know what? I'm, 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 I'll ramble on for two to three minutes about it. It's just like, it, it, it was like, you know, I, I found this really old, like radio shack mic that I had. There's like a bunch of rumbling in it, windows movie maker. So I have a bunch of picks. It's just like, Oh man, like it took me back <laughs> really did. But, um, the ironic part was I expected to be done, but at the point I'm just like, I felt good. And it's like not the political part of it, but just like mm -hmm. the, you know, the whole creative process sure. that kind of got me back into it there. So I just started doing random vids at the time. So there was like a potpourri of things that come in. But where the sports really come in, in 2016, the Cleveland Browns were about to go in 16. Mm -hmm. They didn't, but they did the next year. But like, <laughs> but I, I was like, there was this video I, I saw a couple years earlier. It was uh, only in Cleveland. It was a history of the Browns after like the move. But the problem was, is that video only went to the beginning of the Haslam era. And mm. like, there were like bits and pieces, but there wasn't much really connecting that Haslam era to the, like that, that video to the current situation. So my mm. hope was with Cleveland Browns, like, you know, the first vid I did, I, I hope to bridge that video with the current era and it kind of did but at the same time it was obviously very raw there was like you know still trying to find my style in a way and just 
really dig into that. But mm -hmm. I mean, I enjoyed doing it, but I expected it just to be a one off. I mean, I expected maybe like 50 views on it. <laughs> so so there was no real plan to, to no, do sports stuff. It was no, just no, 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 no. It was just like, as I said, um, I've always compared it to you remember that scene in Saving Private Ryan where the guy just leans on a black wall and then it ends up collapsing and reveals a bunch of Nazis just chilling <laughs> inside. That's what it sounded like to me. I like I, I like and then Jackson Bello completely bottomed out like a month later. I'm like, you know what? This is terrible. I should do like a quick video about it. And then mm -hmm. I just kept rolling with sports and that's how it kind of came to be and once i did like another experimental vid called the haters guide it's you know the nfl season no. i'm like you know what i've got nothing else going on it's like i'll do that see if it works out and then uh, one moment that was like really crazy to me and this is when i had about like i think like 450 subscribers at the time it was like i was nothing like i woke up the next morning and then i just randomly popped up it's like oh what's it say it's just like i gained 100 subscribers in the night and i'm like but that's awesome yeah, and it's just like, and then he just, okay, I thought that one was a fluke, so I did the Super Bowl, it ended up getting more traction, I'm like, okay, there may be something here, you gotta mm -hmm. keep going with this, and then it just like, snow, it snowballed, mm -hmm. that's the way you can really say it as. What, what works better for, for your algorithm, uh, when a team is doing well, and you're talking about it, or a team is doing poorly, like what 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 it, does better for you as far it as it varies per se. Like I, I'd say, like I don't really try to focus on the algorithm per se because it's mm -hmm. always ever changing, and it's like if you try to become a slave to it, it's just going to consume you. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I there are times where I feel like okay, I'm like focusing too much on the numbers instead of okay, am I putting out like a good product? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. but yeah. um one of the things i truly respect you for is is having r-rated content i mean it's sports it's supposed to be you know family friendly but you, you know you're, oh. you're 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 giving off that that guys at a bar vibe and and, and oh yeah like have you ever seen people at a bar or stadium there yeah. are f-bombs going yeah. left and right yeah. go to a steeler game at heinz field especially this past <laughs> sunday probably a bunch of expletives <laughs> being thrown out you do not send kids there yeah 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 keep it down for the kids hey, hey, oh yeah like you, they're gonna go this. on Nickel <laughs> yeah, like nickelodeon like if they had uh, the walker game on nickelodeon and then you're just saying like okay like why is daddy swearing at the tv about the chicago bears it's like well sometimes they get really angry about the performance of their favorite team and a bunch of words they usually won't say will come out <laughs> you're a bunch of things they may going, regret you're probably not going to college because of what happened tonight <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um so it, it, how much work research i i'm well, I, I guess to, to pivot a little bit there's these like history of videos that you did mm -hmm. and and the the most recent one that i can remember and you know again as somebody who who does production and stuff like that the toronto video um it just had me in awe for so many different reasons because there's there's research there's production there's sourcing those clips um how long would you say those take from inception to upload i'm going to be completely honest i don't even have a timetable of how much time <laughs> i spent on that like it, 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 there was a time where i spent like i mean it had been in like the thought process for years and then you slowly chip away at it over time wait for the right moment so a lot of that was just like okay let's dig into these sources let's find like every single tidbit i can leave no stone unturned so mm -hmm. that's why you get like the interesting stuff like Harold Ballard, I find to be an incredibly interesting figure, not because yeah. of how good he was, just because it, it doesn't seem real. Like it all seems like something out of like, you know, cartoon villainy, that Saturday morning stuff. Yeah. That's what like really like attracted me to him, mm -hmm. especially since like, okay, well, certain examples say like, okay, Th Daryl Sittler is too much power. We, I, I can't trade him because of no trade clause. Let's trade his best friend to the worst team in hockey at the time, the Colorado Rockies as the uh, I mean, I mean so like a punitive way to punish him like th that doesn't even seem real mm -hmm. so uh, there's that there's also you know finding every bit of footage you can i mean some of it's easier because toronto's more you know there's a lot of historical archive there but you still have to hunt through the old games sift through everything and then once in a while you find some random stuff like i found like clips of harold ballard i didn't realize were out yeah. there so 
helps yeah. a little bit there. That, that's when I get impressed when I see footage where it's like, where the fuck did he find this? This is I'm like an old games, and it's just like, and I'm sitting there, oh, okay, and then just like you just log wherever it is, and you hope it's like okay, find a way to use it. So it's oh, it can I, get a. Uh, it can get uh, very intensive, but it also gets rewarding at the same time in a way. Speaking of using games, how do you dance around the copyright issue? Because I know anytime I try to do anything like movie related, they 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 uh, they, they give me a good, good old yeah, slap the, in the, the hand. The league's there. usually flagged down pretty hard. I know NFL is usually an insta claim. Mm -hmm. uh, NHL, like it's mostly claimed, but there are some that slip through the radar. I know the, the Thrashers vid I did kind of slip through the radar, but hmm. um, some of them, like, you know, most of them, like the modern stuff gets claimed pretty yeah. regularly. So uh, NBA, like MLB, like they used to be really hard in terms of like um, – claiming everything like they had failed to cease desist on a few people before i think one wow. was dodger films so like this was like 2015 mm -hmm. but they've started to realize wait a minute social media is actually helping us out so there have been a lot of baseball creators that have come out of the woodwork yeah over the past like year or two years because baseball like mlb they've realized this is actually helping our product it's helping sure. us relate to younger like a younger audience i mean yeah. even like I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, I don't think they like my stuff because all I do is, but I'm talking like, you know, other creators. Well, I mean, so, like, but they don't really claim like as much as they used to. Yeah. Like, like John boy, John boy. Oh, know. dude, he exploded. Yeah. I know, like, um, it, it, like that. I think the thing was they didn't want to be like uh, associated with him in the beginning, but yeah. now he's throwing first pitches at ball games. He's part, <laughs> he's doing races and like, you know, the sausage races in Milwaukee. So like, <laughs> the they guy realized, wait a minute, the... this guy's actually, <laughs> mm -hmm. he helped like to expose it. Yeah. Like he, <laughs> he put like visual footage together. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it only took him a half hour, which makes me envious because most of my stuff takes like ten plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're you're in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh area. Mm -hmm. um, you you have quite a, a myriad of of teams. Uh, I, I'm I'm big on hockey, football, and baseball, uh, basketball. I you know I'm stereotypical yeah. white guy, so I, I don't know much mm -hmm. about basketball, but um regarding the Steelers Penguins and Pirates those are all very different teams in regards to success um has that has being a fan in in that city been able to like ground your viewpoint on fandom and appreciate the comedy of all aspects you know, absolutely uh i'd say the pirates were my biggest inspiration in terms of like you know lampooning a lot of mm -hmm. stuff because i I, I was too young to remember the early 90s teams. Like, I don't remember. Like, I have to still do, do a double take mm -hmm. when Barry Bonds was on the team, when we had Doug Drayback, Andy Van Slyke. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I went through 20 years of dog shit. Like, mm -hmm. I went through the Bonifay, Littlefield being, like, uninspired. And it's like, you know, they have those random fans that are like Kool-Aid. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, there's just headache after headache. And then you realize, like, late 2000s, it's not point, no point being angry. It's just like it's hilariously bad. <laughs> so that's what kind of got me into the whole thing, which mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was such a cathartic relief when the pirates were actually good, you know, for a couple of years and now they're back to being bad. It's like, well, back <laughs> to being comedy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a Met fan. So that, that 2015 uh, was, dude. that was it. My vacation. I had yeah. a little brief time to enjoy almost winning. i'm sorry about that man i actually know a bunch of mets fans the guy I do a podcast with tomorrow on tuesday nights five points he's a big uh, he's a big mets fan as well so yeah it has not been a good time i just read a stat today that they're the only team in history to be in first for a hundred days to finish with a losing record so yay records <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that they, they unfortunately a lot of records with collapses i mean 2007 2008 yeah yeah, yeah. we know how to fuck things up we're good we're real mm -hmm. good well i mean at least you're not the pirates that's all i can say i, like it's, I, I guess it's i mean i mean like at least we have no expectations i mean the pirates i mean have you ever been to pnc park uh, no, no. Oh, I haven't. dude! If you ever get the chance, you absolutely can. It is a treat. The only uh, stadium I have found that rivals it is Camden Yards. I, I mean, I, City I, Field's pretty nice, but I mean, Camden and PNC are in like a league of their own. I've at heard, least from the ones I've been to. I've heard my my. I'll just call it my ex brother in law was from Pittsburgh. He went to Un Juniata, and 
in the mid 2000s, we would kind of get at each other. We went to a bunch of games at Shea and the Mets would just destroy the Pirates because that was when the mm -hmm. Mets were pretty good in the, in the mid 2000s. Yep. And All then, right. of course, playoff time was when the Rangers eat just push the rangers the penguins push the rangers shit back in and it was just like mm -hmm. hey turnabout's fair play and uh you know we would yep. get in each other's chick cases and but yeah he, we always had the plan to go out there because i mean at the time we had city uh, excuse me at the time we had Shea stadium and i was like anything's got to be better than this <laughs> and, uh, uh. and he was tortured he was tortured sitting in that building <laughs> oh yeah i remember um <sighs> Like that was the age of like, once again, Dave Littlefield. And that's like one of my a bucket list vids for the future is like going through like those 20 years of just bad seasons. I mean, that's a record 20 consecutive seasons of losing baseball. Mm. I mean, I don't think that's been done in any other sport. So that's really? what they're, I think so. I know like the Phillies like had a stretch of like 30, like 31 years, but they had one like winning season, like caught in between that. So I think it's like 19 and 18 or something like mm. that. So as, as a fan and, and, and just thinking as a Pirates fan, would you rather, cause I, I, I have this thought many times again, as a Ranger fan, tw 2012 to 2016, they were, they were in it. They were constantly mm -hmm. in it. Uh, they, you know, they made it deep a couple of times. They made the finals in 14. Uh, and I had so much fun in that, in that period, but, uh, you know, nothing to show for it. Would yeah. you, would you rather be a fan of a team that, you know, is consistently okay, but doesn't really get there? Or would you rather have a team that like, just out of 20 years, they win a world series and then that's it. They're not in the post. I mean, if you think about it, there are a lot of teams that fit that profile. The Kansas sure. City Royals went through a deep rebuild. The Houston Astros went through one. The Cubs went through one. Right. I mean, even though, like, I thought the Cubs would do more than this, but <laughs> they have that World Series now. I mean, the Indians were there for a bit. Um, mm -hmm. St. Louis Blues, Capitals. So they're like, well, uh, they always have like one cup, but at the same time, it's like, I've also had like that window with the Pirates, 2013 to 2015, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of 2016. Mm -hmm. But come 2017, you realize, yeah, this team isn't good. Yeah. So. <laughs> that was a mirage. Well, what, what, mm -hmm. what would you personally prefer? Would, would you rather a couple of seasons of, of decent or this, this one anomaly where you, you win it all? I think at the end of the day, I think the goal is to win a championship. Sure. So I'd say probably would be to win it all Yeah. because you, you will never get that memory taken away. Cause yeah. there's like, I mean, even in playoff failure, there is still a lot of pain. Yeah. Cause you have those moments, like say, I'm thinking of looking back to the Toronto video, oh. uh, Matt Sundin, 2003, I think it was game six against Carolina ties mm. up the game to head to overtime. That's deflated because Yaroslav, I think, uh, Vasicek, I think his name was. I, I, I forget his name, but I, like he had scored in overtime, and that's just like deflating. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you have your ups and downs, like say with the Indians, Rashad Davis, one of the greatest home runs yeah. in World Series history. Yeah. They don't seal the deal. Yeah, yeah, a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of great memories that just get erased because the, the team ended up losing. Uh, oh yeah. I, I mean, it, I, again, going back to my Mets in '06, Andy Chavez made that ridiculous catch uh, in left field, and they lost. So, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Guy robbed the two-run home run. Nobody cares. Um, so, with that said, um, how are you able to understand, like, because you do have moments where where you're a little softer on some teams than than others. Mm -hmm. How how do you know when to when to really go hard and when to maybe ease up on teams with your contract? I'd say I'd say it was more there are a couple factors you kind of put into it. Like, okay, do they have high expectations coming into the year? Like say mm -hmm. the Mets and Padres, like they deserve mm -hmm. to be reamed because mm -hmm. they cut flat on imploded. They've had huge expectations of World Series glory mm -hmm. and they're just gonna like go like they just did not succeed. So, I mean, a lot of people are going off on them, not just me. Yeah, They're also like, okay, oh, dude, that, that's, an, that's a disgrace. Like, yeah. 
They should fire the executive branch and keep going from there. But that's just me. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. And there's also, I'd say, probably ownership issues, too. Like, say, like, the Ottawa Senators of, like, 2018, 2019. Mm. Like, 2017, they were one goal away mm -hmm. from the Cup Finals. Like, mm -hmm. I, I remember seeing there, like, when – Chris Kunitz scored in double overtime. I'm like, oh my God, this is a brutal goal for Ottawa. Because yeah. I'm cheering too. It's like, holy shit, they scored. Yeah, you look at like, Craig Anderson. Yeah. He's just, just yeah, so like, yeah, I mean, that is deflating. Like, yeah. that entire team is gone, but like the ownership got like cheap and like cut everything. It's like, you can't go off on the fans or like the team. It's mm. not ownership, man. Like, you, that's not normal. Do you plan on doing more, more stuff like you did with the Toronto video? Uh, in regards like to like, like ownership and things like that? Uh, yes. Um, I know I did one on Artie Moreno from the Angels about mm. a month ago. I know there are a few like historical ones I want to go to as well. Hugh Culverhouse is one uh, like an owner I find really fascinating. He was with the uh, Tampa Bay Bucks for a very long time, and he was mm. just bad. <laughs> I mean, some of the stories like even just in base research are just – <laughs> like he – like, he he gave like Bo Jackson when he was in college a tour of like the team facilities. Like they had told him like, okay, this isn't gonna mess up your college eligibility. Like you can be fine. And turns out they lied. It did, and it disabled his college eligibility. So Bo oh. Jackson tells him, "Do not draft me. I'm not coming to you." With the first oh. overall pick, guess who Tampa Bay selects in that draft? <laughs> Bo Jackson, and he doesn't sign. So that's why he went to Oakland. It's like a fifth round pick. He oh. went to play baseball in Kansas City. Oh, man. So you can actually thank uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers for him being a dual sports star. Yeah. You know, we haven't had one of those in a while. Uh, like, if you had to pick one right now, who do you think could probably play two sports? Like, you know, not, mm. not that, that any of them can or do. Who, do you, who do you think could probably pull it off at this stage? <sighs> Part of me feels like Mahomes could. Just yeah. like maybe baseball. Yeah, his dad Jameis was Winston was. Yeah. Yep, Jameis Winston was pretty good as a pitcher in baseball. Kyler Murray as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think any of them could do it. Yeah, yeah, good call. Like, yeah. say, like, I mean, like, if you're a quarterback, I feel like it's mostly a very similar, like, motion. Like, I feel like with football, you're using more of your shoulder. But with, like, like baseball, you're using more of your core, torso. Yeah. And just yeah. your arms just, like, yeah. kind of there is like a sling. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So my wife is British, uh, and she's also a film YouTuber. Uh, she often gives me crap because I get I get very heated and, and excited when I watch sports. Uh, you know, I get they invested. They don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand for for some dude, dude. If she's British, you'd think she'd understand the fervor yeah, that comes soccer. with Premier League. Yeah, exactly. Premier League, dude. That is that's like let's that's even bigger than the NFL. Yeah, yeah, and she'll say things to me like, you know. Nothing about this affects you. Why are you letting it bother you like that? Um, well, it's it's a psychological thing. It's like, you know, you're related to, like, your team, your city. Yeah. It's like people get pissed. Like, well, I, I tell her, you know, you're a movie fan. Nothing about that affects you. You know, once the movie's over, that, that, that's it. You're done. Uh, but I, I, would, I would say that film and, and sports have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. um, with dramatics i mean there's there's stuff oh, underlying yeah. stuff that you, you know you, you could really really focus on and, and and it's it's just more than numbers sometimes oh easily you yeah. i mean you get into like free-flowing storylines of sure. how like teams unfold throughout a year um say like uh, jacksonville how they went from like a championship caliber team to the tragedy of just being bad again yeah. like that sort of thing is like you can't really write a script about say um like certain like sport games like um the miracle on ice yeah. like they've made movies about that yeah they're like like it's like an unfolding play in a way yeah. then i mean you have your different characters your leads your motivations then you have like certain events that happen like say a player gets injured or like there's a contract holdout or there's mm. like you know a lot of like tension conflict sure then you have your climax say like final play of the game or like mm. you know super bowl or something like that and then you have your ending which is either a happy ending or a sad ending yeah. so it does have a combination of like sort of like different elements of say a theater or movie but it's not like scripted 
I mean, yeah. hopefully it's not scripted. I, I can't tell you how many times an announcer says, this person is oh for 21 and they haven't hit a home run in so-and-so. Mm-hmm. You know what and they're they doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, the announcer jinx. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this kicker hasn't made a kick from 50 or further. All right, it's going no, on. The Justin Tucker <laughs> jinx is a big one. They say like, oh, Justin Tucker has never missed a field goal. And then he misses a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they didn't say anything when he made that 66-yarder yesterday. <laughs> Um, would you explain uh, deeper drama and storylines of sports to somebody like my wife that 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 Hmm. exists i would say like you'd have to like introduce them to like elements because there's a lot of jargon they may not understand yeah say like you know injuries contract holdouts like um certain like uh, elements of the field of play that you'd have to understand. So there's like a kind of understanding that you'd have to like really get yourself into. Mm-hmm. But like, once you get into that, I feel like there are a lot of similarities. Like suppose like, say I go into Hamilton and I know nothing about like a historical context. Sure. Like, sure. I don't know, like, Oh, I don't, I know nothing about Alexander Hamilton. Yeah. I mean, I, I can gauge a little bit on what's going on, but at, at the same time, like I, don't really know like what to expect from Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you said it before about emotion. Uh, um, There was that disaster when when the Mets traded Wilmer Flores and Mm -hmm. let him play. Yep, he was crying that day. Crying on the field and and sure enough, he hits the home run the next day and it's just like, you know, that, yeah. there's something more to this. This isn't just, you know, mm-hmm. stats that, that there's, there's. Oh, easily. There's emotion involved. Come on. Yeah. Uh, the only reason that trade didn't go through, I think, was because Zach Wheeler's physical failed. If was I remember it, correctly. Was it Zach Wheeler or Carlos Gomez? Uh, somebody, somebody I'm failed. I'm not sure. Somebody failed. Yeah. I know Gomez got traded to Houston, if I remember correctly, after with um, Mike Fires. Yeah. So I want to say it was uh, Wheeler, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 certainly something silly. Um, mm-hmm. There's also stuff like uh, real life issues that tend to rob us the ability to mm-hmm. publicly laugh at some of the mistakes these players make. Uh, where where do you draw the line uh, when it comes to joking about outside life stuff? Mm. Well, I try not to go after family. Like, mm-hmm. if they're not public figures, I try it. Like, say, like, okay, maybe some, like, uh, Andy Reid's son had, like, you know, a drunk driving issue. I'm not going to mm-hmm. talk about that. Right. Like, I'm not going to talk about his son's drug issue because it doesn't really affect, like, the play on the field. It'll probably affect Andy Reid, but it's mm-hmm. not going to affect, like, say, anything I do, per se. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's a lot of, like, there's a line, like, also, a lot of people are going off about, like, um, you know, players refusing to take the vaccine and they may like not play. Like, especially in the NHL, there's like a little bit of that going on. I don't know if I'll touch that just because you're opening up a can of worms. Yeah, And I found like, also like, that's why I try not because nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. 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 Well, that was an, another thing that, I mean, I, I stopped watching football for a little bit with the, with the, the kneeling and it's just like, guys, it was, it was, sports. it was rough. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, people use it as a form of escapism. They don't want to get lectured. Right, right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm watching this to not hear about the news, and you're you're bringing the news into my escape. And with... I think that's what happened a lot during uh, last year, too. Like, because, like, there was a lot of that air twined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, do you believe the trope uh, of some players can't play in big markets? in a way mostly because like there's a lot there's more pressure in like bigger markets there's more media scrutiny like new york is a notoriously unforgiving market Mm -hmm. philly's very unforgiving boston is very unforgiving but say you go to a market that's more casual like say you go to dallas for hockey like you're not going to get ultra scrutinized like you would in say toronto which Mm -hmm. is a notoriously like brutal hockey market to play in yeah they're desperate too they're 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 Mm -hmm. they're suffering that 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 oh dude they are they are relentless i mean Mm. they are they i mean they have already turned on marner and matthews and it's like wow what can you do (laughs) Um, additionally do you think it takes something extra for a player to play big in a big market and continue i'm not sure i'd say it's more like just 
being able to channel the outside noise and or like uh, tune it out and just like focus on the game at hand. I know they're like, I know like a lot of athletes are more like, you know, like alpha personalities. So I mm-hmm. feel like they want to be the best thing. Yeah, I, I don't feel like anybody's going to like going to say like, Oh, I'm like, I, I just want to like get my paycheck and go home. I don't, mm-hmm. I feel like if you do that, you're going to fall out of the league very quickly. Yeah. Lindor so, this year is just, just, you know, you're having a bad year and you're worried about fans booing. You're like, dude. <laughs> I mean, just, well, he didn't get that in Cleveland. So yeah. that's why it's kind of like a different situation there. I mean, his defensive metrics have been very good. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. once again, like they want the hitting production he had in Cleveland and he hasn't gotten that yet. What would you consider Pittsburgh as far as big market, small market, medium market? I mean, it's a big it's sports small town. market, I'd say. It's small. I mean, especially with baseball, it's definitely bottom rung in terms of like budget and like corporate backing mm. funding that sort of stuff there hockey like it's mostly because hockey is more like a relatively normal cap and it has they're able they do have the new arena there's mm. also a lot of uh, stuff with um you know generating revenue from like say like you know the branding crosby malkin stuff like that so mm. they're able to build off that but like football I think that's uh, more of a larger market because I feel like the the audience base for the Steelers is more national, mostly because like a lot of people left Pittsburgh in the 70s and 80s because there weren't many jobs around here, mm-hmm. moved to other areas, and they brought their fan allegiances with them, sent them to their kids, and they became Steeler fans. I think the, most the, of them became Steeler fans. Yeah, the NFL is probably the one league where you know fandom travels like. You know, I, I've come across people all over the place where they're, they're like, yeah, I'm a Seahawks fan. I'm like, fuck, what do you mean you're Seahawks fan? You live in Queens. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, That's pretty easy. I mean, L.A., New York, those mm-hmm. sort of areas like Arizona, yeah. Texas, Florida, yeah. huge melting pots. Yeah. yeah Just because yeah. a lot of people move down there for jobs, they bring their allegiances with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think there's a team that gets shit on that, that maybe doesn't deserve it? Hmm. I don't know. Um, they uh, You can justify any team getting shit on for any reason you could think of. I mean, you could say like, oh, the Dallas Cowboys, they don't deserve to get shit on, but yes, yeah, they, they do. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't know, because, I mean, I have my biases and people could say, like, oh, why are you going it that hard on, like, Philly? It's because uh, do you understand the rivalry between Pittsburgh and Philly? <laughs> have you seen what Philly does to their, like, teams? They ruin everything they touch. They are – they. you remove Philly from Pennsylvania, it's a better state. But that's just me. <laughs> and you can say the same thing about Pittsburgh in a way. Like, oh, Philly says, like, you remove Pittsburgh, it's a better state. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, aren't you – you're technically closer to Buffalo than you are Philly, right? Do I have that right? Um, that oh, right. yeah. Like, I think Buffalo is only three hours away. Philly, I think, is five. That's so interesting. How, how yeah. uh... Closer to uh, Columbus. Like, Columbus is oh, three. Sure. I might be closer to Cincy than Philly, but I'm not sure. Ugh. There's not much competition there, though. <laughs> they beat us in football on Sunday, so <laughs> it, it was Steelers ugly. Are weird. I, I I can't put my finger on the Steelers this year. Yeah, they're they're rough. It's uh, <laughs> it was a bad game. Conversely, do you think there's a team that isn't that hot that people make a big deal about? Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Notre Dame fighting Irish in football. The, nobody like they never like they always like are plastered in our faces they have that big nbc contract they always pump them up as this big like bowl contender then they go to the cfb playoffs and they get their asses kicked by ohio state clemson <laughs> or alabama like every year and then mm. it's just like oh great it's like everyone's sitting there pissed it's like wait why did notre dame lose it's because you have a soft schedule you're riding based on reputation and you're coach is a is an asshole mm. that's why nobody likes you yeah i i i i personally have this feeling and i don't know i might be on an island but every time 
uh, somebody in hockey talks about Carey Price and and how uh, Carey Price can could can save the, the franchise and and win you a cup. I'm like. Carey Price, have you looked at his postseason numbers? That's the thing. Like he, he looked weird for a while, and then he yeah. pulls that magical run out of his ass, and I'm like, okay, maybe it is true. Yeah, yeah. Braden Holpe has more wins than Carey Price in the postseason. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. I mean, like, I think it's more the team around him than anything. But sure, once again, like, I mean, you can argue it was a soft schedule with that North Division, but I mean, they took out Vegas, so. Mm. Yeah, they're strange. I don't know. They're so strange. They are. Um, your character is that of a, a sports shit poster, which uh, much inherently must draw some hostility from certain uh, fans. Oh, dude, that, that's inevitable. I mean, <laughs> you, you you shit on teams, you expect shit back. I mean, uh -huh. that, that's fair. What are, what are I mean, some people of... dunk on me whenever something happens to mine? Uh, it's yeah. like it's it's the trade off. Yeah, your prediction video is infamously. It's like, oh, dude, easily, <laughs> easily. It's like, and it's on. Tape. And then, yet I keep doing it. Yet I keep doing it. <laughs> uh, what are some of the more? All you can do is embrace it. What are some of the more annoying encounters you've had with these butthurt fans, so to speak? Oh, I mean, there are some that just get very obnoxious, like in just text form, and just like, oh lord. Really. Um, I'd say like whenever like they you know, do something good or like, oh, this aged poorly. Like they'll dogpile you. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I mean, you're jumping the gun. Like the Sixers vid I made a year ago. Like there were a bunch of Sixers fans just dogpiling because they were first in the conference. It's like, mm -hmm. wait till you win a championship. <laughs> then you can go off. And lo and behold, they blow a three to one series lead to Atlanta and everyone's making fun of them again. <laughs> so what do you think it is about fandom that, that it, it's more about the, the ability or or the need to you know show how brave or proud you are it's psychological i mean it's part of being in a group it's part about you know having a fervor it's about being connected to something and i think it fills like a void in like human nature that we may not have like okay we're part of something now mm -hmm. like okay like if i go to like heinz field with a bunch of steelers fans i feel like i'm part of the Steeler fan group, or like mm -hmm. I may be an opposing fan. I'm part of the resistance to the Steeler fan group. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you go to a Steelers Ravens game in Heinz field. There's some fights coming out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've heard, uh, Dodgers it, it Giants violent. games are really, really, Oh, very violent. violent. Like I think one of their fans got stabbed in a parking yep. lot, if yep. I remember, like a couple yep. years ago. Yeah. That so was... like, um, that became like a, a, a big deal, like a loss. That was a huge news story. Like yeah. a couple of people got arrested. Um, the guy I think is like brain damaged, if I think, or like brain dead or something. Christ. Over like space. very tragic. See, that's where I'll side with my wife and be like, listen, this is just, it's just. Yeah, I'm not going to go off and like threaten physical violence yeah. on people. I'm not going to do that. I mean, there are people doing death threats. I don't know if they're just like teenagers taking the piss yeah. or like random guys from like Europe or like just there were Jim Bob from Pawtucket going off about, um, say, Giancarlo Stanton mm -hmm. threatening him with death for striking out. I mean, there are people that do that, but there are people that need serious psychological help because yeah. the they like people. I mean, teams lose, especially Sucks, but especially on the internet. There's there's no way to like perceive tone. Like the sentence oh, is no. there. Like you can't you can't you know i'm kidding it's sarcasm it just reads you know oh, kill hardcore. yourself and it's um, just like unless you're like aware of like just i mean i don't know if it's like i mean if you tell them to kill yourself i don't think that's sarcasm i think that's just legit but <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah. if you spend like five seconds on 4chan it's like yeah that's that's legit <laughs> they, they mean that yeah I, I try to avoid 4chan <laughs> yeah uh, same same as i but like i mean <laughs> Um, it's still out there. So uh, I'm a bit of a a, a, a uniform snob, uh, and and I'm I'm starting to get a little weirded out lately with with all the special editions and and Thursday night uniforms. And mm -hmm. what is what is your stance on the progression of uniforms over the last five or ten years? If I feel like they're getting far less creative, and much. I feel more... like they're they're becoming more traditional. I feel like really I mean, a lot of more. 
Well, I mean, like they're kind of like sort of more throwing back to like older styles. I know like the Steelers don't really change uniforms. I know the mm-hmm. Pirates have kind of gone back to like say uh, mid nineties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. They have like the like they some like throwbacks as well. Yeah. The Penguins went back to their home jerseys from like 91, 92, which the I gold, find to be a lot better than yeah. the Vegas gold. Mm-hmm. So like sometimes they actually look better than the changes. And I feel like that's what's kind of come back. The Ottawa Senators went back to their old logo as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, that, um, I, I guess maybe it, it's a nitpick against the NFL because the NFL seems to be like, Oh, the yeah. NFL only cares about money. That's yeah. why they keep doing all this different stuff. Like uh, we did it as a gag on a, we do a clickbait sports every Thursday, me and a couple other guys. Mm-hmm. And um, we did this, uh, we found this like um, it, a collaboration between the NFL and Ed Sheeran. Like they had <laughs> caps for 30 bucks, shirts for 30 bucks and coats for 250. Oh. I'm like, you're spending 250 bucks on an Ed Sheeran NFL collaboration jacket. And the problem is, like, uh, our, like, punishment scheme is, like, the person who gets the most in Super Chat money is punished. So I had to buy that jacket. I am still waiting for it on shipping. I actually lost money that day. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, well, there's stuff like, uh, you know, Cleveland. Well, they, they fixed it. But two or three years ago, Cleveland would just have the word Cleveland all over their, their oh, shirt. Oh, that was bad. Pants. I mean, they was like they were, they, sometimes they want to change for the sake of changing, yeah. but it just looks bad. Like the Rams, their uniforms are bad. Mm-hmm. Like I do not like – I hate their logo. Their, you, their, their uniform jerseys are like yeah. – it's too like bright, tacky. Yeah, the their, font their is, numbering, is, the font, yeah. it's like yeah. something out of like a generic EA NASCAR game from 2005. <laughs> it's just like those jerseys are bad. I mean, mm-hmm. keep the color palette, mm-hmm. but get rid of – just change up the color scheme. Maybe go back to what it was in like say the mid-90s or the late 90s. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then maybe change up the logo again, but it's like, it, yeah. it's, it does not work. What's your take on, on single color jerseys that they seem to do only on Thursday nights? Like, Oh, like color rush. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are cool, but for the most part, like some of them are like really tacky. Yeah. Like, the like Bengals... I like the Steeler ones. Like the Bengals yeah. one isn't too bad. The Ravens one isn't too bad. The Seahawks one looks terrible, but that's more because they do like uh neon green. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, no. Yeah. And Detroit with her all gray, it's just, it's just, yeah. yeah, Kind of confusing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, wait, we got a super chat. Uh, Aaron, thank you. $10. Why do you guys think Kurt Schilling got continually snubbed on Hall of Fame ballots? He was one of the most dominant clutch pitchers of his generation. The Hall of Fame voters make several ridiculous decisions. I think that's inherently political. I think it's because like he's very controversial and outspoken. Like, mm-hmm. he, he, dude's a kook. Let's not lie. <laughs> but I'm not. But like, the shit he says outside the stuff he did with the game company and like defrauding a bunch of investors that has nothing to do with what he did on the field. Right. That's why I think he belongs in the Hall of Fame. And with like the steroid allegations too, like, I mean, I would get rid of like the time frames where you thought people would do it. And with guys like Clemens and Bonds, I think even by eliminating those years, I think they're still worthy of the Hall of Fame. So that's why I put them in. Yeah, Bonds was good when he was when he was my yeah, size. with the Pirates and then like yeah. it, like he started taking like 98. Yeah. So he still has 10 years of really good production. Yeah. Clemens, same thing. 10 years mm-hmm. of really good production before he got to Toronto. Just put him in as a Red Sox, and then put and then you could probably put Bonds in as a Giant. And I think those two are the only ones I'd really say belong. Like McGuire didn't really justify it. Paul Merrow really didn't justify it. Sosa doesn't justify it. Mm. Well, why but, do you think the MLB is so harsh on on defensive players? Like it, it seems like you you need to be a good good hitter to to even get thought of. Like there's there's guys with varies. multiple there's, golden gloves that just nothing. It varies. I mean, I, I, I figured Vizquel would, but I mean, with mm. those allegations of domestic violence, I don't think he's getting in. Yeah. Like some of the stuff he's dealing with, that's going to that's gonna hurt him, which is a shame because Vizquel was best defensive shortstop of, of his generation yeah, once absolutely. you move past Ozzie Smith. And that was the time when it was starting to transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, Hollywood should learn something from from – sports uh, it's, i mean most most baseball writers are very it's a very gatekeepy industry and yeah. it's very like sort of traditional it's like 
okay, I, I don't like this guy or like, <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to bring in my pet project. So like you mm. get like the dude who has like one vote for Jack Morris and it's just like, why are you voting? <laughs> um so i have i don't know how much time you have i have one final question to ask you and if you, if you don't mind taking a few from the chat or yeah i or definitely whatever. can okay so my final question uh, again you're a penguin fan um uh, you were somebody who experienced a, a rather difficult rebuild in the mid 2000s mm -hmm. Uh, and had a decent understanding, and you do have a decent understanding of teams in the same situation. Uh, the, the the 2000s Penguins, the, the mid-10s Oilers, and the late 10s Sabres. Where would you put today's Rangers in Ooh. regard to those three? I don't know if you can really gauge them in the same like atmosphere of either because the Penguins issues were that they were broke. They were dealing with bankruptcy and they were on the verge of moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not happening with the Rangers. I, I mean, unless there's a budgetary issue, which I mean, would shock me. I don't think they're moving anytime yeah, soon. They could start the a early, GoFundMe and nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the late 2010 Sabres are just like bad. They have high draft picks. They don't develop them. I'd mm -hmm. say the closest might actually be the Oilers, but that's mostly because they have those really high draft picks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a lot of talent there. Does it pan out though? Yeah. So that you're in maybe that boat, but I mean, you're not officially there yet because you'd have to have like years of futility before you get to that point. I mean, you've had like one year that was disappointing, but mm. then you randomly blow it up and then overcompensate on grit. So yeah. it's, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, hopefully it works out. Maybe it does, but it's a weird move. Yeah. What, what do you think of the Metro this year? It's pretty, pretty gnarly. It's, it, it, it's, it is. It's very tough. I know. Um, I mean, Carolina's going to be strong. I mean, the only ones I can see really at the bottom are like Columbus. Columbus. They're rebuilding again. It's going to be rough. Um, New Jersey, probably seventh or sixth. Really? Even, say, even with their additions? I think they're another year away from truly being like competitive. Okay. I think they need a, a bit more to rebuild because remember the year before, they had to start rebuilding a rebuild, which, I mean, that'll take another year or two to start a retool. So that's why I think they're close, but I think they may just miss. And I think they'll like really get their stride next year when you have guys like Hughes, um, you know, he, um, sorry, they have the other Hughes too, I think. Luke Hughes. I think oh, that's right. Him. That's right. Yeah. I yeah. think they have him drafted. Ty Smith will keep developing. Mm -hmm. Dougie Hamilton will really meld in, hopefully, to that style. You have, um, you know, Jaeger Sharangovich, uh, Nico Hischier. So you have talent on that roster. It's just uh, getting it to develop and mesh into a cohesive unit. I probably should have asked you about the Devils instead of the Rangers because because they've had a couple of high picks now and and mm -hmm. like, they had a on. rough last year. I know um, this final year also. This is the last year of the PK Subban deal. So <laughs> I know. Um, so it, 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 I was actually on a Devils podcast a couple of the, uh, days ago. So that's why I, I, saw I that. like was able was to like, dig into that. Yeah. Yes. So like, that's why I kind of like got like more of an insight as to what they're doing and like how they're kind of building. Mm -hmm. I had like an idea of what they're doing, but at the same time, it's, they're kind of still about a year away. I would say the Rangers, I feel like they're about a year ahead of where the devils were. Yeah. So, I mean, you're hoping for development from like Kako, Lafreniere, mm -hmm. um, you know, Kravtsov, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I think it was a mistake to trade Bushnevich, but they uh, didn't have the cap to really see. sign him. Yeah. So. yeah, they're going to need to sign Zibanejad next season. So yeah, that's going to be the issue. I mean, because, mm -hmm. I mean, in a couple of years, I mean, barring how they pan out, you're going to have to pay Kako. You're going to have to pay yeah. Right. I mean, fortunately, you might be able to get them on bridges for a little bit and then sure. get them to their contracts. But that Kreider contract's really starting to, like, yeah. pinch on you. Yeah, and that may be the point where it's like, okay, um, we may have to trade him for mm -hmm. lesser less value, but just because we need the cap. Right, right. Uh, how do you feel about the the Penguins? How, how much longer do you think you have a, a window? Ooh, it... Well, this year is their last chance. If you actually look at their current situation, it's very tough to gauge them as anything serious. 
Crosby's going to be out for a few weeks to start the year. Malkin's out for at least a month or two. Their best center right now is Jeff Carter. And then you look at their free agent situation. Malkin's a free agent. Latang's a free agent. Jeff Carter's a free agent. Brian Rust is a free agent. And that's None a guy. Those I can are kids, see, neither. Oh, not at all. I mean, Brian Rust, I can easily see him getting seven by seven on the market. Like somebody's going to pay him big time. If mm. Zach Hyman gets five and a half by seven, Brian Rust is easily getting seven by seven if he has the same year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the same token, how do you feel about Washington? Washington seems like they're <sighs> their their core is stale. It's a situation the Penguins were in a couple of years ago, where like mm -hmm. they get kind of caught up in building like a team to beat a certain other team. Like mm -hmm. they they got like you know older, slower, uh, more physical. But at the same time, like it's taken away from what made Washington really good, and that was their strong defensive style and good like structure mm -hmm. they haven't won a playoff series since that cup win and i think people are starting to realize it was trots that made that yeah team. Trots. especially since he's taken really under like teams that shouldn't make the playoffs in the islanders and he's taking them deep to the playoffs I mean, the islanders look untouchable all of a sudden. they look very good very yeah. good good yeah. structure up there um they're done in a perfect world if if lundquist henrik lundquist uh, didn't have his unfortunate issues. And for some reason, he was he was able to play and a free agent. Uh, would you have taken him on a flyer for the postseason last year? I don't know. Remember, he was under contract in Washington, so he probably would have played for them. Well, I, I'm just, I'm just, you know. Yeah, but I mean, world, you probably I'm... would have because you didn't have a backup for Tristan Jari. I yeah. mean, Casey DeSmith was injured. Yeah, that, so you that, really that have series, to get somebody. That series. So was, I mean, that was that was Jari. It was. I'm surprised he's still a Penguin, to be honest with you. I thought they were going to run him out of town. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it makes sense logically to not trade him, but I mean that that was bad. Like game five, like game four, when he just yeeted the puck to just Josh <laughs> Bailey. I'm like, I'm sitting there like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I'm just like stunned at just like how boneheaded that was. Who do, who do you think has more rope? Uh, uh nhl goalies or nfl kickers i'd say goalies kickers get, are like just dropped it like a hat if they have a slump yeah. period uh, oh you missed two you're you're done <laughs> pretty much like i'm surprised that's why i'm more surprised they didn't cut greg joseph from minnesota after he missed that field goal <laughs> got another chance but i mean a lot of kickers like they just get like just cut if they have like a bad stretch because like there are a bunch of kickers you can just like just flip through and hope something sticks yeah i think kickers realize that too it's like oh i didn't work out one place i'll go somewhere else hope we'll make it there yeah yeah and, and they seem to just just rotate it is, mm -hmm. it, it's very rare to get a kicker that sticks around on yeah, like chris boswell like is a very rare situation mm -hmm. justin tucker is a very rare situation mm -hmm. where they stick with one team for a mm -hmm. long time Mason crosby way back. Mm -hmm. yeah crosby yep he's still there um all right so Boskowski with the patriots for a bit oh sure 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 um i will open it up to the chat for a little bit we'll we'll, we'll go maybe 10 10 15 minutes if anybody has sure. anything for tree um um stick warriors thank you ten dollar super chat what what are your thoughts on the browns this year I think they're really solid. I think they're a well-built team i think they bolster their defense in the off season m m the thing with them is if they can reach the heights that they want to, it's if Baker can keep up. If he can do that, sky's the limit for them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'd say like they're the clear favorites for the NFC North right now, which is really strange for me to say considering how bad they've been, but they're good. Yeah, yeah. You're not worried about Baltimore? I'd say Baltimore, like they'll, they'll be up there. But I think the thing is, mm -hmm. like, they've been looking very vulnerable these past few weeks. Like, they blew that game against Vegas. Like, their defense looks very rough. Their offense, like, if you contain Lamar and force him to use his arm, it's going to be trouble. They technically should be one and two if it weren't for a missed delay of game call and a unbelievable 66-yard field goal. Mm -hmm. So you have to consider that. <laughs> right. Uh, well, and then they randomly beat Kansas City, so I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kansas City's – currently a little odd they're sloppy so they're very yeah. sloppy like their offense is off sync their defense is having issues um i think they'll make the playoffs but at the same time like they they gotta get it together yeah even when, a lot more talent 
even when they were good, they'd get themselves in like these 21 point holes that they'd have. To oh yeah. Make. And then they'd, um, and then Houston would, you know, become Houston and, yeah. <laughs> and then they, they fall apart. And I mean, I saw that at the time. It's like, this is the kind of loss you don't recover from. And they honestly have it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jake, thank you. Uh, either of you got a favorite NBA team, the Bulls. Bulls must oh, oh, I'm my favorite team growing up was actually the Toronto Raptors. I always liked the hmm. scheme and like the Jersey. So like, and <laughs> so that's what I follow when I was younger. You know, you follow Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter. Damn shame. That guy never got a ring by the way. Yeah. You had all the Kaki Olajuwon on that team. Um, Chris <laughs> Bosh. So like, and then I, you know, the soft spot of me felt good for them when they won the ring. I mean, they oh, choked man. a ton. <laughs> and then they finally got it with Kawhi. It's like, nice. yeah, I'm I'm a New Yorker. Uh, you know, the the Knicks feel like the the Mets cousin at this stage. So, uh, yeah, w w whatever. <laughs> I mean, they made the playoffs. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, expectations there now. Mm -hmm. It's like James Dolan like finally stopped meddling with the Knicks, and now he's meddling with the Rangers. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. If you ever get to do uh, another owner video, either Dolan or. Or uh, the Will Ponds. The, oh, oh, the, the Will Ponds. Oh. That's an old legacy. <laughs> Thank God they're gone. But. <laughs> um, Dice, this has fuck all to do with sports, but I'd like to say I like that tree carving behind you. Yeah, actually, um, my mom actually got this for me. So she just randomly put it up. It's like, oh, you need something back here. It's like that. She did that. It kind of <laughs> like, I know a lot of people think like it kind of looks like a halo in the background kind of like this so that's why yeah, the way you're like standing yeah <laughs> yeah so it's like it's completely incidental i did not plan this at all the, the so maybe i might sports. bring into it maybe i'll like i like put in some led lights in the background really just like jazz it up <laughs> so maybe it could be something like that oh did i i don't think i asked you how did you come about the name urinating tree well, a um, bit weird to say, but it was me being an edge lord when I was 15. It was like <laughs> I was playing Xbox Live. I think it was like Rainbow Six Black Arrow, I think it was. Okay. But it was like an alongside player Rainbow Six game. And I'm sitting there like, you know what would be a funny name? Urinating Tree. And then it just <laughs> stuck. I don't know why. It's just like me being 15 and thinking it was the most hilarious thing ever. And and there it's stuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like it's like it's it's weird as hell, and it doesn't make me marketable in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, whatever. You, I, I, I'll stick with my fifteen-year-old edge lord face. Do Thank you, you do you have issues when it comes to sponsors and stuff like that with, with uh, your name? I feel like they just go by tree or U tree. Yeah, I was so gonna say. Go I, I know your seat geek code is tree. So yes, <laughs> no, I, I feel like like trees trees short good shorthand. So that's why mm -hmm. I like. Mm. Um, Easier roll like that. Chris, thoughts on Vegas through three games? Oh. I don't know how to gauge them. I know, like, they actually have a legit defense for once, which is strange, mm -hmm. considering that's been their biggest issue the past couple of years. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of hoping the shoe doesn't fall off the other foot with the collapse. I'm still not really high on Gruden or Mayock. I think they've, like, really kind of botched, like, the last couple drafts. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean, they've invested a lot in their defense. They've invested a lot in the, um, you know – personnel yeah and i mean Derek carr i've always liked Derek carr i've always found him very underrated and mm -hmm. he's finally getting back to that form he had in 2016 and if you do that i think you're at least a playoff contender yeah they they, so. tr they tried to lose yesterday too i, I think it well that's how it is they kind of tried to lose a couple times they yeah. nearly lost baltimore i mean pittsburgh they just beat them i mean mm -hmm. they they just took a took a pound of flesh out of the steelers and is what it is. Yeah, but, I, I I always feel like teams that are great in September, you, you that's that's nothing. There's a lot of teams. Yeah, oh, oh no, no. I mean, most teams like usually who do well gain form like mm -hmm. later in the year. The 05, 06 Steelers were a lot like that. They mm -hmm. weren't that good, and then they found form in the end of the year, and then rode that to a Super Bowl. The Giants did that twice. So. Oh, that's right. Weren't they like oh seven? They thought they, they were, were like mathematically yeah. They eliminated. nearly ran. <laughs> yeah, they nearly ran Eli and Tom Coughlin out of town and won a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Dice says LEDs improve everything, so maybe that for your for maybe. your tree. That's what I'm thinking. LED light could work. <laughs> uh, so, what are your thoughts on New England, and and what is their Ooh, future? I don't know. I mean. 
it's been disappointing. I didn't expect them to make the playoffs. They're more like middling. They're kind of mm-hmm. in that fallen empire stage, mm-hmm. but they're still trying to chase back what made them great. Mm-hmm. I mean, unfortunately, them seeing Tom Brady win another Super Bowl, you get the narrative. So oh, Belichick was nothing without Brady, which I think is bullshit. I think it's they were it's a symbiotic relationship. Mm-hmm. Belichick needed Brady, and Brady needed Belichick. And then Brady had a great team around him. He had an elite defense and strong like offensive weapons, and I think that's what helped him win that Super Bowl. If you're starting a franchise tomorrow, you can only have one. Who are you taking, Brady or Belichick? Hmm. I feel like Belichick because he'd have a few more years with him. I feel like Brady, <laughs> like you're only getting like maybe two or three. I don't know how long he's going to play. Mm. I mean, mm. we were saying this five years ago too, yeah. so I I don't know. Yeah, far. I, when I started, it's like, oh, Brady's probably going to retire soon. And everything's good. And we're five years later. It's like, oh, maybe Brady will retire soon. He's yeah. still playing like a god. I have no idea what the mm. hell's going on anymore. Yeah. Yeah, an NFL player that was playing in the NFL during 9-11. That, that makes all the sense in the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, and he's not a kicker. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. kickers tend to last a little bit long. Uh, Jake says, fire Matt Nagy. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was embarrassing. If you ever – like, the stats for the Chicago Bears on their offense, uh-huh. Justin Fields got sacked nine times, 47 yards of total offense, one net passing yard. That is abhorrent. Like, Fields was not ready, but they gave him no favors. Like, his lines collapsed easily. They gave him long developing plays, so he had to run for his life. It's just mm-hmm. like, it was bad. Who, who do you like, think in the NFC is is the, like the, the top competitor for the Bucks? Well, I mean, the Rams look really good so far. I mean, yeah. especially with how Stafford's been performing, it's like a, a confidence you didn't see out yeah, of him. Go in figure. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Green Bay is like gonna be up there just because it's that last chance year. I mean, mm-hmm. they uh, that uh, last game last night was like it, it felt like you know there was a lot of really bad calls. So Green Bay should have won by a lot more than they did. Mm-hmm. So there's that there. Um, I say those are the two right now. Some other teams may emerge throughout the year as well, but those are the three that I think are the tops right now. What the fuck is wrong with the Jets? The the Jets, that's why. I mean, the (laughs) Jets, they're they're not even a problem. It's just an entity. It's like you are, you know, to Mets. It's like (laughs) to Jet is just, you know, to be a New York Jet. They call it the butt fumble. It's just Mm -hmm. like you just, they they butt fumble. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. And Jets fans get tired of hearing that, but it's just like you've been doing this for like over half a decade. (laughs) What do you want me to say? They look even worse than they did under Gase. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. They're a mess. I I mean, I liked Robert Saul as a coaching candidate. And it's just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, I I remember. Well, well, not not I remember the, the fact that they they got rid of Darnold. It, like it it didn't yeah. make any well, sense. Like, it wasn't Darnold his... needed a change of scenery. He needed one. He got ruined by Gase, and now he's looking a lot better in Carolina. Like he's not like a world beater, mm-hmm. but he's much better than he was. He looks starting caliber now. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so, how I felt with Tannehill when he left Miami. It's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, like he was uh, ruined under Gase, and then he goes somewhere else, yeah. becomes starting caliber. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aaron says, if you had to pick your World Series teams right now, who you got? I say Astros Giants. Ooh, interesting question. I would probably say, <sighs> who do I pick in the AL? Because that's like a gauntlet right now. Hmm. Mm. I would probably say, I mean, if you're looking at teams with the most form, I would probably say, yeah, Astros look like a good pick, and I'd go with the Cardinals because Ooh. you do not go against a Cardinals team that is riding bullshit form in September mm-hmm. because they've done this in 06, 11, and 12. They yeah. do this every year, and it's like, oh, it's like you're mediocre. They look like shit. They yeah. look flawed. Now I'm guessing Moseliak and she'll get fired. <laughs> Rattle off 16 straight wins. Yeah, exactly. A- Adam Wainwright is pitching like he's back in 2011. Yeah. Molina's hitting like he's in 2011. They've got guys that have coming out of nowhere, like Goldschmidt's playing his best baseball. Arenado's playing his best baseball. They have these random rookies coming up, making a big impact. Like, um, 
uh, you know, uh, Edmundo Sosa, Lars mm. Nutbar, uh, Dylan uh, uh, Coughlin, I think his name is. I'm not sure, but um, uh, Tyler O'Neill's become a legitimate stud. Mm. Like, so Jack it's too. holy shit. Oh, yeah. Like, he's, I mean, th they're like coming out of nowhere. And it's like, what? Okay. And you do not, I mean, I've learned this from history. You do not go against the Cardinals when they're riding bullshit for them, for right. that sole reason. Right. Because they're going to go against a wild card team, even the Dodgers or San Fran, and they are more than likely going to embarrass them just because <laughs> this is what the Cardinals do. Um, who is the odd team out in the AL wild card race? Oh, I mean, I think it might be the Yankees, if only because they have the toughest schedule. They're playing the Blue Jays in the race. I think the Blue Jays, I think I was looking up earlier, they play the Yankees and the Orioles. And then the Red Sox have the easiest schedule, I believe. I think they play the Orioles. And then who else do they play? Like something like another really easy team. Mm. Yeah. Um, and they have, they have what, a two, two game, two and a half game, two? They have a, yeah, a little I think, bit of a um, a touch. Let me take a look, actually, at this wild card standings. Let me look up ESPN real quick. If it loads for me. <laughs> Uh, wild well, cards. Yeah, uh, Yankees are a game up. Red Sox are tied, and then the Blue Jays are a game uh, down. So it's very neck and neck. The Seahawks, uh, the Seattle Mariners are two games back. The Athletics are three games back. I think the Athletics, unfortunately, it's too late. They had a hard free fall, and it took them out. Oh, so but, the, um, the Yankees, Yankees are oh, the one. Yes, the Yankees are the one. Oh. I think they won that series against. Um, the Red Sox. Okay. Uh, Red Sox are playing the uh, the Orioles and the Nationals, so they have mm. an easy schedule. Mm. So I mean, Nationals Toronto are, was playing really well there for a while. In September, the Nationals have been weird, though. They're, they, I don't know what it is about certain teams when when all the pressure's off that they just. Fuck it. We're just going to roll off eight in a row. Oh yeah, that's how it is. Like um, <laughs> kind of like Detroit's been that way, oddly enough. Colorado was kind of that way for a hot minute. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, Detroit's massively overachieving, but it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you can take advantage of a really god awful AL Central, hey, yeah, good way to roll with it. Yeah. Um, uh, Jake's I mean, the like, are like there are teams that are just falling off. Like the Mets have gone to yeah. shit. The Padres are five hundred. How are they five hundred? For God, they were like running away with the first yeah. wild card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the second yeah. wild card. Sorry. Well, they, yeah, they were. I mean, there was a point where when the Mets were still just kind of, ah, shit. Well, we can't, we forget about the wild card because it's it's the Padres. You got to focus on the Braves and winning the division. And suddenly that became a, a, a pile of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Cardinals probably surely appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, the Giants are like doing a hell of a lot better than I thought. I expected mm -hmm. mediocrity out of them. And it's mm -hmm. just like, they're a bunch of older guys, early to mid-30s, that are just having the best years of their careers. It's like, what? <laughs> okay, uh, when did Gabe Ga Kapler get this good at managing? He was terrible in Philly. Yeah, Philadelphia was atrocious, yeah. Yeah, and then um, Philly's probably going to miss the playoffs again, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I think Atlanta should be an okay shape. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how far Atlanta goes. I feel like they just are too banged up to really make a significant impact. But, uh, yeah. I mean, losing Acuna is brutal. Yeah, I, I think whoever was going to win the NL East was, was just fodder anyway. It, yeah, I mean, it, I expected that division to be more cutthroat. It's just been everyone tripping over themselves. Yeah. No, I lose. No, 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 I lose. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, oh, the Mets have a deep lead. No, no, you, you guys take the division. It's okay. <laughs> we're, we're just going to collapse again. It's we, great. We got 18 holes on October 3rd, so we're going to we're gonna go mm -hmm. ahead and plan for that. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> got to get it before the cold weather hits. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so uh, we, we just went over an hour, so that, that about does it. Um, Tree, thank you so much for joining me. I, I immensely appreciate this. Um, and I'm glad I could be on, brother. Thank you for having me. Thank, well, no, thank you. Uh, is there anything that you have coming up that you'd like to talk about as far um, as your channel? Mostly I do a, uh, a weekly series called uh, This Week in Sports Ball for the NFL season. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a week three on that. should be out on Wednesday. But So I do that every week. And like it's just oddly been another one of those, those experiments that have panned out. So there's that. Uh, there's the NHL preview that's going to come up. And mm -hmm. 
I would say also the um, MLB playoffs preview. That's probably going to come up as well. So mm. that it's going to be a busy couple of weeks for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 season certainly uh, has mm-hmm. has gotten. Well, I mean, a lot of seasons are starting to, one's winding down, getting into the nitty gritty, and you got everything mm-hmm. else starting up. Starting up. Um, a perfect yep. season for you. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, best of luck. Keep up the good work, sir. Absolutely. Uh, again, the Thank channel you. is Urinating Tree. Uh, it, 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 a, a very good comedy writer on top of the, the, the sports. It's, it's, it's something to, to check out at, at the absolute very least. Um, so thank you again thank you to everybody who was watching and we will see you next time if i could find the outro maybe we won't see you next time (laughs) (laughs) we're we're staying on for 24 hours folks let's get the coffee rolling up (laughs) all right now i'm just like disheveled with a bunch of grease stains and a wife beater (laughs) all right guys thanks so much take care